This hack tip is brought to you by Hack5 and viewers like you. Support us directly at hackshop.com. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morse, and today we'll be covering some troubleshooting options in Nmap. This might be useful to know if your scan doesn't give you the output that you expected that we've seen previously, or if you don't get any output at all. First off, of course, we have the really simple ones like MAN and TACH. Specifically, those would look like Nmap TACH which gives you your output for a help, or the man page for Nmap, which also gives you plenty of good information, and I'll just cue to quit out of there. Also, there is plenty of other good information in there. I definitely suggest reading into it if you haven't checked it out yet, because that will help you with all sorts of troubleshooting. Now, say you have an issue that you're running into and it might be easy enough to just update Nmap. You might need to know the version that you're running. With this, which is simply nmap tac v, you'll find out exactly which version of nmap that you're running. So you might figure out that you need to update nmap to get better results. I found out that I'm running 5.21, it looks like, over at nmap.org. There is an updated version out, so I should probably update my nmap. Now, another really good command to know is for debugging. This one is simply tac d. So I would type in nmap tac d, and then whoever my target is. So I'll use 7331. Let's use 74 this time. That's a really good one to check out. So this is going to show you host groups, timing, how many packets per second are being used, any kind of timeouts that might happen, and so much more. It's extremely helpful for debugging. Also, if you want to, you can also specify how much debugging you want to do. For example, you could use TAC D1 for the lowest through TAC D9 for the highest version of debugging. Also keep in mind, if you use D9, it might take a lot, lot longer than D1 does. Another tr troubleshooting option to use is reason, the reason option. This is going to show you port state reason codes. So a good example of this would be such as typing in nmap tac tac reason and then your target. So I'll use the same one again, 74, and hit enter. We'll wait for this to complete. And you'll get this nice new section down here that says SYNAC. And you'll also get a whole bunch of ones that up here say connection refused. So any closed connections are going to say connection refused. Open ones should show SYNAC, so acknowledged. Now if there is no reason code or the port just doesn't respond, it's probably behind a firewall. Now I'll be right back after the break with some more reason codes and debugging techniques, but first, let's take a break for our sponsor. The Hack Shop is Hack5's premier store for all of your pen testing needs, including one of my favorites, the USB rubber ducky. I've told you about it before, but I'm going to tell you again, this thing is so cool. It looks like a flash drive, but it types like a keyboard, and it can type scripts into a computer crazy, crazy quickly. Now this week I would like to share the coder's forum post where he actually outlines some really handy hotkeys that you can use for your USB rubber ducky on an Android device. That's pretty cool. And of course, we couldn't do this show without your support. So I would like to thank you personally with something special. You can use the coupon code SNUBS with any order in the hack shop for your own signed hack tip sticker. Looks just like this one. Thank you so much for supporting the show. And we're back with more troubleshooting options. Now, let's say that you don't care about all those closed ports, you just wanna see the open ones because there's tons of them in your scan output. For this example, you would type in nmap and then simply tac tac open, open, and your target. Hit enter, it'll run, and it'll give you just the open targets. Now, if there were any closed ones in there, we're not gonna see them. The next one looks a little bit cluttered, but it is useful to know to show a nice summary of the packets that are both sent and received during a scan. It looks kind of long, kind of cluttered, but stick with me real quick. So this one looks like nmap, and then you type in tac tac packet or dash tac trace and your target. 
hit enter, and you're gonna see a bunch of information scanning down here. So specifically, this is really, really long, so you might want to actually put this into a text file, and you can just do that by adding bracket trace.txt to the end of the output so that this long summary of info will end up being in a file that you can read back later. So it's very interesting if you want to look through here, but it's pretty long, so I'm just going to skip that. Next up, we have if list, which will display the host networking configurations. While you're connected to the network, you can type in nmap tac tac if list and let it run. And it'll come back pretty quick. It's going to show you the network interfaces and routes that are configured on your local network. So I can see down here, I have a WLAN zero. And up at the top, I have a couple of different IP mask IP addresses that I can see right here. It's pretty interesting information and it can definitely be handy for some of your debugging that you might have to do. And lastly, but definitely not least, we have TAC-E. So this is going to specify which type of network interface that you would like to scan on. So it's you're always gonna use TAC-E whether you're using ethernet or wireless. So for this example, I would type in nmap TAC-E and I'm going to use WLAN zero since that's the one that we have on our network. And then I'll type in my target. Let it run and it should complete just as it normally would. And you're gonna see the default output as usual. You can also use ETH1 or WLAN1 or whatever you end up having on your network. This is a really, really easy way to switch to a different interface very quickly and do a really simple scan. Now, what would you like to see next about Nmap? We're almost done with our whole series about Network Mapper, but let me know in a comment below or you can email us tips at hack5.org and be sure to check out our sister show, hack5 at hak5.org for more great stuff just like this. I'll be there reminding you to trust your Technolust. Creeper.